We are not relaxed. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Jake Kleoshko. How's that? We are live this morning of Tuesday, September 5. What's going on on the table? Okay, well, uh, sorry we're a little late today. I'm just booting up my, uh, my gadgets. Yes. We're a little slow today. Okay, ah, abracadabra, this thing doesn't want to go on. Ah, how was your Labor Day weekend? Are we back to the grind now? It's not a manic Monday, <laughs> but it could very well feel like a manic Monday on a Tuesday. Yeah? When uh, it's always a hard, it, that's always a hard thing for many people to get back to the grind after a holiday. Yeah. Well, anyway, I hope, uh, I hope everybody is uh, back in the groove. Okay, today is a very interesting. Today's a very interesting day for our gospel reading. Are we ready? Huh? Are we ready? What's going on? Huh, Joe. Okay. Let's read from uh, St. Luke. It's going to be on St. Luke today, chapter 4, verses 31 to 37. Okay, Jesus went to Capernaum, a town of Galilee. Okay, he taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is this about his word? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the news of him spread everywhere in, this, in the region. It's interesting how in this one short gospel today, the word authority is mentioned twice. Okay? He spoke with authority. Okay? They were astonished at his teaching because he spoke with authority. Then towards the end, again, they say, what is this about this man or his word? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits. So Jesus speaks with authority. What do you think is the source of that authority of Jesus? What is the source of the authority that the, uh, the demon, the devil, eh? the, de the, the devil who possessed... Uh, who possessed that man, and all the people who were witnessing this scene, what was the source? What, what do you think was the source of Jesus' authority? Knowledge yeah. of Godship. He's being God. <laughs> yeah. That's a word. Huh? He's being God, his knowledge. What do you think? Huh? What is the source of Jesus' authority? Yeah. It starts with a big T. Big letter T. Okay. Huh? <laughs> what is the source of Jesus' authority? It's because Jesus always spoke the truth. Eh? Jesus always spoke the truth and only the truth. He himself said, I am the way. The truth and the life. Jesus is the very incarnation of truth. Jesus is himself the truth. Okay, 
That is what gave Jesus' words authority. That is what Jesus's, uh, uh, that is where Jesus' um, aura of authority and power, of dignity, of integrity comes from. See? The fact that he always spoke the truth. And the contrary is true. The devil who said, I know who you are. Right? I know who you are. What have you got to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. See, the devil, why does he know who Jesus is? Because if Jesus is the incarnate truth, well, the devil is the complete opposite. The devil is the father of lies. Right? The devil is the father of lies. The devil always tells a lie the devil never tells the truth whereas jesus always spoke the truth so here is where you can see the big contrast between the two jesus and the devil truth versus lies right the jesus's power and authority and and, and all of that derived from the fact that he was truth incarnate now, lesson for us, lesson for us, if you want people to believe you, you want people to, to, to uh, regard you as somebody with integrity, right? you always have to speak the truth. A person with integrity, a person who is worth believing, a person who has credibility, a person who wants to uh, project himself to be someone of authority has to always speak the truth if not if we tell lies if we tell lies nobody's going to believe us if we tell a lie even just once it is always going to be very difficult to redeem yourself that is why that is why uh, <laughs> if there's any if there's anything that uh, you have to try to avoid at all costs, it is to, uh, to break the trust that people have uh, on you. To break that trust. If you break that trust, even just once, and you tell a lie and you get busted, it is always, always very difficult to recover the trust of people on you very difficult and you gotta prove yourself a hundred times over just to be able to recover the trust that you lost because of telling a lie okay? that is why there's nothing good about telling lies and and even if you think you can hide a lie well think again think again you cannot hide forever in the first place, you cannot hide from God. Re remember, what's the catechism? What's the answer to the catechism question? Does God know all things? What is the answer to that question in the catechism? God knows all things, even our most secret thoughts. No one Very good, Sophia. Very good, right? Does God know all things? Yes, God knows all things, even our most secret thoughts. Words and actions. See? God knows all things. So who are you hiding from if you try to tell a lie? Right? You cannot hide from anyone. And by the way, right? You don't have to be God to know all things. Right? Papa always busts your lies, don't I? <laughs> I can always tell who's telling the truth, who's telling a lie. You can, because you know what? It, 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 the truth of the matter is to tell a lie requires plenty of effort to do. It's very stressful to tell a lie. Why? Because you have to remember all the details of your lies to appear consistent with all the other lies you have told. <laughs> it, and it shows in your face. It shows in the way you look. It shows in your demeanor and the way you act. You don't have to be a psychologist to tell that people are lying. You can see it in their eyes. 
You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in the way they do things. You can see it in the way they even smile. They smile like, uh, I don't know, the devilish smile of the devil. <laughs> There's no way, no way that liars can hide their lies. Even from the human point of view, a person with integrity can always tell who the liar is. So, but of course, between one liar and another, it's a little bit more difficult. That's what they say, to tell who's really lying. But between a person with integrity and a person who's lying, a liar, the person with integrity can always smell a liar from a mile away. Okay? And that is why, that is why uh, uh, it is not worth uh, our while to be telling lies. No, it is never, never, never going to pay off in the end. You might be able to escape a few consequences here and there for telling a white lie here or a, or a big lie there somewhere, but <laughs> you can never escape the consequence because sooner or later, sooner or later, you will get busted. You will get busted. Your lie is going to come out. It will come out in the open. You will never be able to hide it. And besides, who are you fooling? Right? As I've been saying, who are you fooling? You're only fooling yourself because you cannot fool God. God sees everything you do, including your most secret thoughts, your secret works. You think you can hide in the closet to commit sin? And God knows that, right? So who are you fooling? Because in the end, when the time comes for the uh, uh, particular judgment, well, God is going to stand there. Uh, Jesus is going to be there to, when you uh, when you die, and he's going to ask. Uh, he, he will he's going to ask you, well, what did you do with your life? And there, he's going to review everything you did, and you cannot uh, hide. And what's even worse is when the general judgment comes, folks. <laughs> when the general judgment comes, your life will be like a movie for everybody in creation, from Adam to the last man, can see. Do you want now all your shame and all your lies to be exposed to the whole world without, without, and to see that, oh, you were never repentant for all of those lies? Anyway, it's, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So your lie, your lies are not going to be uh, hidden forever. And nothing, you see, nothing is more devilish. Nothing is more akin to the devil's way of doing things than telling a lie. When you tell lies, you're really, really having a pact with the devil. You're being so devil-like when you tell lies. Because that's exactly the method of the devil. He fools us by telling lies. Eh? Never live your life in a lie. It's not going to pay off. It is not worth it. And there's no such thing as a small lie, by the way. Okay? This, this saying, oh, it's just a white lie. Oh, you can let that slide. Nobody's going to notice. Well, no. All of those have big consequences on your soul. It may not have, uh, it may not have as big a consequence uh, in terms of the the uh, physical world we live in and uh, you know in our, at our work or the family etc it may not have as big a consequence but you know what any small scar that you cause in your soul because of a lie does not heal that fast it will grow and grow and grow and grow it becomes a cancer and once your whole being and your whole soul gets engulfed in plenty of lies it's going to be harder and harder to cure it. It's going to get harder and harder to get out of that life of lies. And you're only making your own integrity suffer. You're making your own honor suffer. And when that happens, time will come when nobody will trust you anymore. Nobody, but nobody will trust you anymore. And sometimes, even if your family loves you, if you've been lying to, even to your own family, they just cannot trust you. And they won't trust you. And you will suffer the consequence of all of that. Even 
if they love you. They may love you, but loving you doesn't necessarily translate into trusting you. See? So, let's be very, very careful with every thought, word, and deed. Let us always act, think, and do things out of truth, for the truth, to defend the truth, to speak the truth, to act according to the truth, following Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And your life is going to be a lot better. I guarantee it. Okay, folks, that's it for us today. Have a good uh, Tuesday. It's going to be a terribly busy day in the Klyachko household today. Plenty of running around, plenty of doing things, but let's all do everything for the greater glory and honor of God. There's no bigger motivation for our work, as we saw yesterday, and for anything to, that we do, than for doing it for the love of God and doing it for the greater glory, glory and honor of God. Bye. Till tomorrow. Bye. Have a good day.